Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of earth shall be blessed. Chapter 15. After these things, verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid. I am your shield, your exceeding great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. Behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven, and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Then he said unto him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord, God, how shall I know I will inherit it? So he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old male goat, three-year-old ram, turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and cut them in two down the middle and placed each on the opposite of the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And the vultures came down on the carcasses, and Abraham drove them away. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them four hundred years. And also the nation whom they serve I will judge. Afterward they shall come out with great possessions. Now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good age, to your old age. But in the fourth generation they shall return there, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark, that behold there appeared a smoking oven burning torch that passed between the pieces. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. When you read this portion of scripture, I think the appropriate question to ask is, what is going on here? I read from chapter 12, where God gave Abraham the call to leave to leave uh, his land, Ur of the Chaldees. And Abraham got up and he left. God told him to leave his country, his people, what he's accustomed to, all the traditional things. You're going to leave certainty for, in Abraham's case, uncertainty to a land that I will show you. Abraham know nothing about this land. God just said, get up and go. Now, Ur of the Chaldees is Mesopotamia, which today is like Iraq. And he was to leave and go to Canaan, which is today Israel. Now, if you look at that distance, let's just look at it in a practical sense. It's approximately 700 miles from Iraq to Israel. We're not talking about an aeroplane flight, first class with air condition. We're not talking about a ship that makes the journey easy. We're talking about treacherous desert terrain. On foot, with his immediate family, and with his cattle and other things that he had. 
is going to walk 700 miles. I want you to all keep that in your minds for the moment. When I was in Jamaica recently, I remember a brother from Padstown, as I was there, I just remember that incident. I think Sister Dawn uh, uh, will know this, uh, Brother Sammy. He walked from Padstown to go to a meeting, Watchwell, which is a clear distance. And we used to marvel that Sammy would walk all that distance because he knew and understood that Watchwell was a weak assembly and needed one brother. And he walked from Pastor on that mountain to come down past here and they go down to Flagaman, past Flagaman to go to Watchman. And we used to marvel at the, 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 the faith of this man. And he said he walked and he left, but he was on the road with the expectancy that he probably would get a ride. Abraham didn't have such luck. There were no planes, no ships, no horses coming to take him and ease him off that distance. And all Abraham did, there was no, where am I going, Lord? Or where am I going, God? I'm comfortable here. And by all descriptions, Abraham was a wealthy man. Everything is good for me here. And you're taking me out of my comfort zone to a place of uncertainty. You don't even tell me where I'm going. You want me to shield up my family, my possessions, and leave here? It's almost sometimes when we are trying to relocate from where we are. We consider a lot of things, right? We consider possible employment where we're going. We consider climate where we're going. We consider where the things are going to be easier for my family where we're going. Colleges are good there. Uh, high school are good for my kids there. We consider a lot of things when we are making a move. All Abraham had to consider was the voice of God. Amen. And the Bible tells us, He went and he traveled at approximate 600 or 700 miles and ended up in Canaan. Pitch his tent, dwelt in Bethel. The inevitable happens when you're there. And Abraham is still human. Famine came into the land. And that must have said to him, this is now we're in chapter 12 going into 13. Why did I leave all this wonderful thing in Ur of Chaldees? Here I come and you brought me to a place where there's famine. And he went and sought refuge in Egypt. He left the house of God and went to Egypt, which is a type of the world. And the inevitable happened. He went there. He regressed. Because he told Pharaoh that Sarah was his sister. God plagued the house of Pharaoh. And so Abraham left and come back. Well, then he and we are now in chapter 13. He and Lot's herdsmen. His herdsmen, Lot's herdsmen have arguments. And then Lot decide to go on the plains of Jordan towards Sodom. Abraham remained there in Canaan. Chapter 14, after the, the, the fighting against the kings of Sodom, he encountered Melchizedek, the king priest, who not only fed him, but blessed him. And then we have chapter 15. So that's what they, after these things that we have in verse 1. After these things, chapter 15, we are now in. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. I'm your protector. I'm your great reward. Abraham at this time now had all the possessions that he could have had and amassed, and God had blessed him. And he said, Well, I have everything, but the one thing I have and yearn for, I don't. All I have is Eliezer, my servant. He's from Damascus. He's way from up north. Is he my ear? Is he the one who all the blessings that you said I'd be blessed would come through? God said, no, he said. One will come from his own loins. Mind you, Abraham was about, I think he was about 90 years old at this time. I can imagine Abraham saying to God, hey, God. Have you seen Sarah, my wife? And Sarah was about 92. Hmm. Have you seen her? Look at me. You're telling me from my own loins I will have a son? He didn't say that. God said yes. Not Eliezer. You will have a son of your own loins. 
when God speaks, the impossible becomes possible. When God acts, things become simple. You see, the, 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 the problem we have sometimes is we try to explain God. We cannot explain God. God has to reveal himself to us. And that's what the, the, the trouble that the world has when we sometimes try to tell about the wonder of God and the, the wonderful and great things about God because they're trying to, to intellectualize it. But here is God saying to a 90-year-old man, you're going to have a child. And through that child, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Be blessed. So we are looking at Abraham, he's the father of the faithful. He's the one who believed God. But just as in all of us, we regress sometimes. Because you have faith and you have great faith. Great faith would have caused Abraham not to ask God here to show me. He would have only take, take God at his word by saying you shall have a child. But it must have been so far-fetched to Abraham that he said, I, I, I want you to show me. I said, I want you to go outside of your tent. And I want you to look up in the sky. And I want you to number the stars. Do you know how many stars are there in the sky? Hmm. In, in our galaxy, in our universe, because we can see beyond it, billions and billions of stars. Since Adam, the kind of there are billions and billions and billions of people who have lived, all of whom are sons of God. God said to him, through you, through your seed, you will be the father of many nations. Is God good at keeping his promise? Is God good at keeping his word? We are going to see it in love. So the Bible tells us here. It says in, in verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Here, dear ones, is the gospel. This is the gospel right here. He believed in God. You know, sometimes we, God gives the call and we're asking, you sure it's now? You sure am I, I'm just supposed to stay behind now? Is it now? The spirit convicts and sometimes we say, I'm not sure. I don't know. Abraham was mightily blessed because he packed up his family and he left. Though his faith had little doubt in there, and we will get there, but he believed God. Amen. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, some great, some strange things are happening here. So God said, okay, let, let's let's consummate this covenant here. And he tells him, I want you to get a three-year-old boat. A three I could just imagine Abraham's reaction at that time. He's getting from bad to worse. I'm asking you to show me something and you, you're asking me to cutting up some animal pieces. What is going on here? You know, I've always said that if I'm in any kind of problems, God forbid, prison, jail, and I need to be comforted, Genesis 15, verse 17 is the verse I will mark. And I say that to people sometimes, it's, what? Are you, you sure you, you read it again? You sure? I can tell you get comfort from that verse. Oh, but if you understand it, it's the most comforting verse that you can get. But we'll get there. So it says, I want you to cut up these animal pieces. And the Bible tells us that he did. And then find birds because of the cutting up of the blood and the bodies of these animals parched in the sun they come down, the vultures came down and Abraham had to brush them away 
And God caused him to fall in a deep sleep, verse 12. And Abraham, and behold, the horror and great darkness fell upon him. And so God is giving him this covenant here. He says, I want you to know for certain, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. Did that happen? Did that happen, of course? When they ended up in Egypt, we're going to see that. Well, we're not going to, but you know the story. They ended up there, and they were in bondage for how many years? He tells us, 400. You see, God is giving Abraham every single thing here. Did they happen? Absolutely. Because God is not slack concerning his promises. So he's telling him, this is what's going to happen. Now he says, as for you, verse 15, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good age, good old age. And he passed the three score seventy eight Abraham lived. But in the fourth generation they shall return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. So that's the confirmation to Abraham as he had in the vision. Now here it comes. And it came to pass when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a flaming flame. Leave that without getting back to where your family is. What is going on here? What is going on here? In the old days, when God makes a covenant for anyone, it's, he cuts a covenant. That's what he does. That's what he did. And he's saying to Abraham, all oh, that promise that I made you that your descendants will be blessed all of these things I am putting my deity on line here if I, if this does not happen may I be caught like these animals here I cannot swear by anything higher than who I am the immutable one God is swearing by himself not cross my heart, hope to die. Kind of thing, the little nonsense we do sometimes. Cross my heart, hope to die. I swear by this. I say. And next thing you step outside, that promise is broken. God said, I'm swearing by my person. We talked a couple of weeks ago about the immutability of God and the aseity of God that he self exists, that he gets life from nothing, from no one within himself and that's what he's showing Abraham by with this cutting right of these animals because the flaming torch and it's the smoking oven and the flaming torch is indicative of the presence of God hmm. what we call the Shekinah what we call the theophany we see so many of it in scripture what's the theophany Theo God Neo manifest is God manifesting himself and he is the representation of these two things that Abraham is facing right here now I want you to fast forward 2,000 years from this day the archangel Gabriel appeared to the virgin in the present day and said you will conceive You shall bear a son, shall be called the son of the highest. And Mary responded with the Magnifica, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Because you have visited this hand. And my spirit rejoice in the Lord my Savior. And what was the last verse of that Magnifica? Mary said, Because you have kept your of the Lord Jesus Christ in the person of the Son oh man this is so good but he goes on and he says on the same day verse 18 the Lord made the covenant with Abraham I want to say to those of us who are breaking bread
Thus Chapter VII engag'd, whose awkward threat We met, and such we shall attempt to make. The time is done, for statute of high Shall exempt for those who are offer'd to collect Their dues; and Judge Prenti says that if there is Uncleanness in the one that deals, they will be what? Cut off. That's in the sacrificial system of the old covenant. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, when Paul says he receives of the Lord, he says, whoever eats and drinks unworthily, eats and drinks damnation to himself. That's what he says, right? What I want to say this year is, when we gather to have the emblem, it's not just remembering the death. It's so much deeper than that. It's not just a remembrance. We are participating in the one, in the one who came, and we, we talk about it today, who manifests himself in flesh, mm -hmm. who condescends on our behalf, who walked and lived among us, who was despised and rejected, who was killed brutally just to make a ransom for your sin and humanity. When you put it in those terms, we're not just remembering an event. Because sometimes we just take it and say, okay, he died, his body was bruised, and his blood was shed. It's so much more than that. So much more. And that's why in the sacrificial system, if there's uncleanness, you cut off. In the new covenant, and that's what, what, what Paul was told, that Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is the what? The new covenant in my blood. The old covenant where the animals would be sliced up every year. Done away with because he sacrificed once and for all. Once and for all. Place of consciousness. What a savior. We sung it, Brother David, giving him. Hallelujah, what a savior. What a savior. The Lord of glory became a man of sorrows. And we have his servant, Abraham, who, and that's I said, that's the path right throughout scripture. Only through faith alone. Abraham believed God and God declared him righteous. And I want to say to you this afternoon if the word of God has touched your heart, if you believe you're convicted in your heart by the Holy Spirit, don't question God. Don't ask why or when. Can I do it? If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I trust that will be the case for you this afternoon. Amen. Amen.